Hi guys and welcome to another video. In today's Fast Film Friday I'm going to rattle through as many tips, tricks, advice, ideas as I can think of in 5 minutes. So let's get 5 minutes on the clock and get started straight away. So tip 1 is start cheap. If you're new to film photography there's so many good options out there that don't have to break the bank. If you're new I'd recommend that you get an SLR, something like a Canon AE-1, Pentax K1000. Tip 2 is if you're coming from digital photography is just to slow down. If you're used to taking hundreds and hundreds of photos every single time Time you go out. Film photography is not like that. With only 36 shots on a roll of 35mm film, you're going to be forced to slow down. And to be honest, if you're anything like me, your photography is going to thank you for it. You're going to end up with better shots and not have to go through hundreds of photos every time you get home. So tip number three is you don't have to rush out and buy expensive film like Kodak Portrait for example. I know Portrait looks cool but there are so many other options out there as well. Things like Kodak Color Plus, Fuji C200, Kodak Gold. Honestly, they look amazing and they're nice and cheap too. Tip number four, if you have a favourite film and there's a sale on, buy loads of it. So something that I've discovered this year, especially with lockdown here in the UK, buying Kodak films has become a bit of a nightmare. Things like Colour Plus have been out of stock for weeks and months. So if you have a film that you like, make sure you stock up on it so that you've got plenty to shoot when you want to shoot it. Tip number five, importantly, is to store that film that you've just bought in the fridge. I didn't know this until recently. It helps film live longer than the expiry date and it is how it should be stored. Tip number six is to stop down at times. If you stop down to aperture settings of things like F8, F11, you're going to get lots more focus, especially if you're shooting travel photos or you're documenting things. Having a blurry background does have its time and place, but think about it. Do you actually want the background in your image? Things like travel photos benefit a lot from having the environment in them, especially street photography. Talk about street photography, on to tip number eight, and that is zone focusing. If you're not used to manual focusing, if you use apertures like f8 and f11, you can basically just set your lens to infinity and shoot anything that's about three meters or further in front of you, and it'll all be in focus. Easy as that, and it also means you can shoot from the hip. Tip number nine is carry a notebook. So unlike digital, you can't just load your photos into Lightroom and have Lightroom tell you what camera, what lens you used. So make sure you carry a notebook and you can just quickly scribble down things like settings you've used. This is great for when you're trying to experiment with a new film and you want to see how your images look. It's really good to have just a shot list of this is the settings I used on each shot so that you can quickly reflect back later. Number 10 is don't just go for the cheapest lab you can find. If you're not developing film yourself and you're sending it away, the lab actually has an awful lot of control over your final image so don't skimp on costs. Find a lab that's got good reviews, a good reputation and hone in on them and try not to hop between labs because you'll notice that you'll get slightly different results. If you want consistent results, find a lab that cares about your photos and keep sending it to them. Tip number 11, if your camera doesn't have a light meter or you just don't trust it because it's old now, consider using an app on your phone. I use this app and honestly it's really good and it's helped me expose images, especially in times when I'm not too sure what exposure settings I need. Tip number 12 is learn Sunny 16. Sunny 16 really isn't as hard as you might think it is. I've got a video and I'll link it down in the description below. It's about five minutes long and teaches you everything you need to know about Sunny 16 so that you can expose your images without a meter in just normal daylight. Tip 13 is don't just stick to the same boring old film stocks. There's so many different film stocks out there. Try some of the different ones. Lomo do really good different color films. And when it comes to black and white films, there's literally hundreds of them out there. Just buy a roll and give it a try. Each one has their own slightly different effect on how the image will look and you might find yourself a favourite that isn't everybody else's favourite. Tip number 14 is try medium format. Medium format film cameras are really cheap unlike their digital counterparts. The only downside is you generally get 8 to 12 shots on a roll but you get that medium format look that just isn't easily attainable in digital. There are some medium format film cameras that are really cheap, for example like the Zeiss Icon. Yes, I just said Zeiss and cheap in the same sentence. You can honestly pick them up for 20 to 30 pound so why wouldn't you shoot medium format? Tip number 15 is have a look at old film photography books. Unlike film cameras, the books haven't really rocketed in prices yet. There's so many good books out there and you can learn from some of the greats. Tip number 16 is overexpose your images. Generally, if you're unsure what to do, overexpose it. Both colour film and black and white film have really good exposure latitude only if you go into overexposure. If you underexpose, sometimes you'll get muddy looking images, whereas if you overexpose, it's really easy to tone them back down. So tip number 17 is have you ever accidentally reeled your film all the way back into the canister when you didn't want to and then you don't know how to get it back out? Well here's a really easy way of doing that. What you do is you get another roll of film, you get the leader wet and then you stick it into the roll of film you're trying to retrieve and if you turn the tops on them just so that you can feel it grip and then pull it out it will come. Tip number 18 is try different colour filters. There's so many different colour filters that you can use and this is a really good way to experiment with your black and white photography. The most standard filter for this is yellow. Yellow actually makes blues in your image quite a lot darker and therefore you can get really nice contrasty skies. Tip number 19 is if you do use a colour filter, don't forget that using a colour filter will actually block a little bit of light. Because you're blocking a little bit of light you'll need to expose differently. 
The box in your filter should tell you by how much, just make sure you don't forget that, otherwise you might end up with lots of dark images. Tip number 20 is develop your own film, especially black and white. The chemicals are really cheap, they have a really long shelf life, and there's not much reason why not to do it. I definitely get a lot of satisfaction out of being in control of the entire process, from taking the photo to developing it, to scanning it, to printing it. Tip number 21 is by far the most important, and it should go without saying, but that is to have fun with your photography and just enjoy it. If other people are saying your photos look boring, who cares? At the end of the day, you should be doing it for yourself, and if you're getting the enjoyment out of it, then who cares what other people think? Cool, well, that's all I think I can manage for now. I think we ended up with 21 tips there. Hopefully I crammed them into nearly five minutes. If you've enjoyed this video though, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I actually have a couple more videos that are uploaded and scheduled, so they'll be coming out in the next few days. And I hope I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.